Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to the Rick Elps Real Estate Show, where today we're going to take a look at the CPI report. It certainly didn't surprise anybody. Um, I did put out a survey in the uh, community section last night, and I believe it was like 37% of you thought the numbers would come in higher than forecast. And uh, that didn't happen. Inflation increased 0.04 in February up 6% from a year ago, right in line with their expectations. So what does that mean? Well, yeah, everybody's watching the numbers now. You know, there's nothing like a banking crisis to kind of mess things up a little bit. And uh, um, prior to waiting for the CPI report, of course, we had Silicon Valley Bank go belly up on Friday. So now the narrative changed and said, oh, man, the Fed's probably not going to go up too high on their next meeting, and then they're saying, well, let's see what happens to the CPI report. Now the CPI report comes out as expected, not improved. So now the conversation has shifted back to, well, how many more banks are we going to have trouble with? Um, maybe they're only going to go up 0.25. Maybe they're going to hold steady. We don't know. So there's a lot of confusion. So in the Mortgage News Daily, here it says, no major drama from the CPI data, but beware the bounce. And you may Recall that yesterday, Pat talked about moving below the 200-day average. Um, that here's where we are right here. There's the peak panic right there. And could we start springing back up? And uh, that could happen. Uh, the one thing that you're going to see right now for the next few weeks is a, uh, is a lot of volatility up and down, maybe even the next few months. So as we try to work through this banking crisis, We've got other stuff going on. Stephanie, I see your question here about explaining a mortgage loan recast. I'm going to let that, uh, I'm going to defer that one to Pat. Uh, he might jump in today. I'm not sure yet. It's uh, it's only 832. So <laughs> no, I heard from him this morning, but uh, uh, I'm going to let him do a better job of explaining that than, than me. And Keenan says, I'm guessing they'll pause till May and then re reassess then. It's hard to guess where they're at. Let's take a look at the CPI data right now and see what's going on. Here's, here's the biggie. See where it says shelter here? 3, 4.393. That's the percentage. That's how much is weighted in the CPI data. And shelter here says we're up 0 0.8 versus last month of 0 0.7. So it's down from where it was. It was 8.1, 0 0.8. And, uh, but it's not coming down yet. It's coming down slightly. So that number really needs to improve. And then there's owner's equivalent, equivalent rent of residents, 0 0.7. Those are, if rent starts coming down, um, that's going to move the CPI data. The rest of it is kind of food at home. You know, there's, that's only 13% food. Um, and that went up 0 0.4. And it says here, December 22 to January, it went up 0 0.5. So this is how they get in the weeds and see what's see what's going on with the data. But Moody's cuts the outlook on U.S. banking system to negative, citing rapidly deteriorating, deteriorating operating environment. They're saying, we don't really like these numbers we're seeing with the banks out there right now, so we're going to cut the outlook. So everybody's just kind of watching, taking it easy. It's interesting that there was two banks. One, the FDIC shut down. They shut down another one, but there was another one that said they were in trouble and their stock went up today. So that happens. <laughs> Everybody jumps in and says, that looks like an opportunity. But let's see what's going on in our market with the seven-day moving average. I had a viewer request if I could put a line showing last year, and that's what that little orange line is. This is where we were last year. Here's where we're at today. And you can see that new listings continue to decline. And we went down by about 150 new contracts this week. Nothing alarming. Um, I kind of thought it was going to spike up a little bit because rates kind of went down coming into the weekend. I thought people hop in their cars, but we didn't see that. So here's our active listings in the market. This is updated on the Cromford Index on uh, Cromford Market Report on Saturday evening and we're at 13 670 they they look at it a little bit differently than i do i'm showing us a 14,400 today um but anyway it's trending down but it trended down last year 
trended down the two years before that. And then it went crazy here in 2022. That's where the inventory went up because interest rates spiked up. People panicked, threw their house on the market. And they started coming back down and they've been coming down steadily ever since. Here's 22, a bit of a roller coaster ride. Hard to predict where they're going to be, except it is and yet it isn't. If interest rates stay high, we do know, we don't have to guess anymore. We know people are staying put because of interest rate lock. <clears throat> going, I'm sitting at three. Why do I want a 6.5? I'm staying put. But take a look at this. The Cromford Market Index, it's not getting very wiggly. It continues to go up. The market in the Phoenix area is um, is pretty pretty good. Um, you know, we're sitting in an index of 132. Anything over 100 is considered a moving into seller's market territory. Now, this varies by price range. In the million dollars and above, it's uh, it's getting a little not sketchy. Probably getting back to normal. It used to take a year to sell a house over a million bucks. Yeah, Sean, that's quite the chart, isn't it? <clears throat> So um, if we look at some other data, here's our accepted contracts monthly. You know, they're up here. March, we're showing 2018. So we're still below, um, you know, 2020 and 2021 to be expected. Median days on market has had a decline since the first of the year. And the average list price per square foot uh, shot up pretty good from January. You know, we got... December was tough. It was tough out there. You couldn't give a house away. Um, and now they're coming up, came down slightly. So that's kind of a flying over at 30,000 feet showing you what's going on in the market. Doesn't look like the wheels are falling off the wagon yet. Um, are they? You know, how bad is this banking situation going to get? Uh, let me share just kind of how I'm looking at it. Because you can find good news and bad news in everything that you see here. I can get on and tell you that Regulation is what caused this to crash. I can get on and say, well, some of the regulation that they removed caused the bank to crash. So you can find your story on, on both sides of the narrative. Um, you, you can say, well, um, the, the, the feds are going to let regional banks crash so they can move everything to larger banks. But then they're going, well, they don't really want legion, regional rank banks to collapse. So, you know, your argument's out there. You can find it. It's just going to be opinion after opinion after opinion. So all I can do is go, well, <clears throat> what's happening? <laughs> so I'm looking at rent here and I just showed you the inflation on rent and we're at $1.33 a square foot. We hit a peak of $1.40. Many of you have reported that you've managed to negotiate some lower rent with your landlords and that's a good thing. Um, the This is MLS data. So they don't collect things like the Met, you know, um, these big apartment complexes that you see, none of that shows up in the MLS. So I don't have any way unless I were to go to rent.com and do some digging to find out where rent is in perspective to last year. But it's uh, it's coming down slightly. Uh, but we are seeing a bunch of what I want to say, aggressive building in Gilbert and in Tempe. So if the bubble pops at all, it's going to pop there. I don't expect rent to come screaming down. Now, nationally, I have no idea. That's why I wanted to look at that uh, CPI data. Now, we don't have any more financial news coming out this week. Uh, there's a Fed meeting later on in the month. So they're going to decipher all this now and decide what they're going to do. They're holding their breath, hoping that we don't have any more banking crisis out there. You can see here that mortgage rates are sitting here and rocking about 6.75. They went up a little bit today. You see that little thing there, it says they're negative. So the market reacted. There was a flight to safety on Monday. Everybody bought bonds. Get out of the banks, buy bonds. And now there's a, well, maybe it's not as bad as we think it is. So maybe things are going to spike back to what they consider normal, although there certainly isn't going to be any normal as we're watching this financial system kind of unwind a little bit. Um, <clears throat> I don't know where it's going to land, but I do know that there's numbers that we want to watch and we'll keep watching them here. So I appreciate everybody chiming in this morning and visiting, and we will see you tomorrow morning at 830. Thanks, everybody.